Hey everybody. Ever since I did my two short films, The Eyes to See, A Heart to Feel, and Unforgettable, I've had quite a few requests for doing a tutorial on what settings I use on the Nikon D5100 to get such good video results. Well, there's already a few videos out there on how to set up your DSLR to get good results out of your camera for video. So this is going to be tailored specifically for the D5100, especially since it's a little bit different because you don't have full manual controls on your video settings. So I'll go through how I personally set up the camera and all the uh, steps that I go through as I'm setting up for video and touch on some of the things and tricks and little quirks of the camera that you can get around to get really good results. Now the first thing I want to mention is the best thing that you can do is to set a custom picture style. Now you can easily do this by going into the menu settings, scrolling to the shooting menu, selecting manage picture control, and then choosing save edit. And there you can choose any of the picture styles that are already set in the camera and edit them pick the name that you want to give it, just some generic name so you know it's in there, save it, and then go back to set picture control, and then you can adjust the sharpness, contrast, saturation, and the hue. Now what I do is I set my sharpness to zero, my contrast to negative, or one notch above negative, leave my saturation at about one notch above zero, and leave the hue alone. Now what this does is when you're shooting video with this kind of picture style everything is very flat and what that means is there's very little contrast and color it's a very dull looking image but it contains the most information your highlights won't be blown out your shadows won't be completely crushed into black you'll actually be able to see details in these things which in turn increases your dynamic range or latitude with video. Now when you have this when you go to edit your video in your editing software, you have all this detail that you can bring out even more and add the things that you reduced in your picture style, such as the contrast and sharpness. So, you know, even though in your picture style you're bringing these things down, you can always add them in your editing software, but retain all that information. So you can still have great looking detail and but still have the same kind of contrast and sharpness as you would if say you set it to vivid which I remember when I first got my camera that's the first thing I wanted to do is well of course I want to use vivid it, you know I want the colors to look vibrant I want them to be sharp you know I, I, I just want it to look good but when you set those picture styles your camera is basically taking your video footage and putting it through the processor and it's adding those things in and it's kind of like shooting JPEG where it takes all those things and it kind of you'll hear the term baked in and you're permanently altering your video footage with these settings and if you set your your camera to do processor work So by doing this, you're going to get the most detail, the, the flattest image, but at the caveat, you need a decent video editing software to be able to take full advantage of this. And you don't need something super expensive. Like I said in the comments of my other short films, I used Sony Vegas Movie Studio 
and it's only a fifty dollar version of Vegas for the most part. There's some things you can't do, but it's more than enough for what most people are looking for. And like I said, it's only about fifty dollars on Amazon right now. As for shutter speed, aperture, ISO, there's a lot of videos touching on this. And it's no different for the Nikon. The only thing that's different is going about getting those settings that you want. Now if you've seen my video setting video exposure for the Nikon D5100, you should be able to good grasp on how to set the auto mode to perform how you want it to by setting the auto, IO, auto ISO. I'll, I'll go through it again just so you can see how I set up my camera specifically before I'm taking video. Now you have to remember when you're shooting video with DSLR it's not like a camcorder where you can just pick it up and go and record something. You really have to sit down and plan out what you're going to do which is kind of why it's tailored towards short filmmakers and just doing small projects. Another important thing is tripod. Good sturdy tripod. The, one of the elephants in the room about DSLR video is the problem with aliasing and aliasing is where you see horizontal lines a really fine detail in the shot and it gives you a psychedelic waviness because it's taking an image on this big sensor that's you know 4,000 plus pixels and when you're taking video you're reducing it down to you know 1080 video it's a over just over a thousand pixels of resolution and it removes those lines to get that smaller resolution and then it has to fill it in with information that's the gist of it and instead of blurring it out like video cameras do it tries to determine what those missing lines are and that's where you get these weird jaggies as they're also called now the less movement you have the less you'll get that and the the more narrow your focal length is also going to reduce that as well because normally they have a lower f-stop so most of the image is blurred out except what you're focusing on now you can do panning shots or tilt shots or any kind of moving shot besides static you just have to be really careful and pay attention to what's in the background that's a lot of times you won't see people wearing striped shirts usually solid colors because of this problem and I'll show a few examples alright now that we have the details down I'll go through and show you how I set my settings as I'm setting up to do a shot first thing I do is set the camera to spot metering mode and I find this works best because of the auto exposure that the D5100 has and if I can move the little box around on my LCD viewfinder I can pick the brightest spot or whatever spot I want and use the LCD instead of just letting the camera determine the best metering for me and then I can lock my exposure in on that now you don't have to do this but that's just the way I personally do it but regardless pick your exposure metering appropriately and what you're comfortable with and then you can go ahead and set your other settings before you lock your exposure in my setting video exposure video I said to go in aperture priority mode but I found that you can actually go into manual mode turn your auto ISO on and you can still set your shutter speed and obviously your aperture and your ISO you just have to keep in mind that the camera is always going to adjust one or the other uh, one or the other as in the shutter speed or ISO to properly auto expose whatever's in your shot and it seems the way it does this is say I want ISO 100 I can set my ISO to 100 and I want a shutter speed of 60 I can go to 60 now it's the first thing it's going to do is adjust the shutter speed and then it's going to change the ISO so if I have an ISO of 100 and a shutter speed of 60 
it's going, and I'm in a bright situation like outdoors or uh, shooting a reflection in the water or snowy background, it's going to turn my shutter speed up as high as it has to to get the proper exposure. Now, the only way to, to combat this is to use a neutral density filter. And that's what the pros use to get the exposure they want, especially at high f-stop numbers, or I should say low f-stop numbers, in the outdoors is by using a neutral density filter. Now, there's the what they call the 180 degree rule, and what this is is setting your shutter speed to approximately twice of what your frames per second is. So typically you're going to use 1 50th of a second and 1 60th of a second. And this is supposed to give the best filmic, filmic look. And in general, I've noticed it does. But you can break the rules, especially if in your scene there's very little movement, everything's mostly static, and everything that's not static is fairly slow, and it'll still look okay. And these are one of those things you should experiment with. Because that's the only real way you're going to learn on how your camera responds. Next is manual focus. I don't ever use autofocus. Uh, I'm always using manual focus. And again, when you have static shots and you've got the camera set on a tripod, this isn't a problem. And if you're going to be changing distances from your subject or object or whatever it happens to be, then you're going to have to keep that in mind when you set your aperture or just you're going to have to adjust the focus as you move closer or further away. You know, like I said, you have to keep these things in mind. Autofocus is basically useless in video mode. Not only is it noisy, but it's very slow. The DSLRs just aren't made to work like a camcorder where you can just follow whatever around and it's basically set to infinity and it's always has everything in focus and it auto focuses really fast you're just not going to get that so you have to keep that in mind when you're setting up your shots so after i've set my my metering and my exposure and have locked it in and i've focused on my subject then the rest is just all basics there is a, another piece of equipment that I absolutely love to use, and I think everybody should have one, is a circular polarizing filter. Not only does it rich in the colors when you're outside, and actually not just outside, I've noticed it works pretty much anywhere there's sunlight, and it's stronger when the sun's above you, but it still works even when it's not. Just, it's just not as effective but you can also get more dynamic range. You can get more details. And this is the trick to, especially in really bright outdoor scenes, to get the clouds to really jump out at you and without blowing out the highlights, especially in the sky, and still be able to properly expose everything else. And it, it just works beautifully. I think everybody should try at least once to use a polarizing filter to see just how big of a difference it, it does. Now, the last thing I'll mention is, it's kind of obvious, but it's still worth mentioning, is lenses. Obviously, the better the lens, the better your image quality is going to be. But you don't have to spend a thousand plus dollars to get really good images. And one of my favorites is the 35 millimeter f 1.8G Nikon lens. It's only $200 on Amazon right now. And that's mainly what I used in Unforgettable. And it just puts out some amazing quality footage. Now there's other lenses out there too. Like the one I'm using right now is the Tokina 11 to 16. And I, I love this lens. You have to be a little creative on how you use it because everything appears so small because it's such a wide angle. But it's absolutely beautiful. And I mean, there's such a large selection of lenses out there. And that's one of the things you should try to do is at least get a faster lens because it'll let more light in and you'll have less problems with indoor shooting. 
but start working with different angles such as this wide angle lens or a macro lens or or just a telephoto lens there's pretty much there's there's a lot of selections out there and you're going to eventually want to step up but obviously that only comes after you get used to the kit lens so hopefully this video will help you improve on the quality of your videos and you'll want to start stepping up to some better lenses and have more fun and get more excited because once you start being able to get better video quality out of the camera then you're just gonna keep getting more and more inspired just look at some of my older videos and there was a big difference between then and now they just plain sucked and now they're well they're okay now <laughs> so yeah just try these things and experiment 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 just don't be afraid to get into the camera and and, and change the settings you're not gonna break it so there you go those are the settings I use how I set up my camera and I hope it's as useful for you thanks for watching and have fun